going to be talking about oil consumption in this video and ways to address it without ripping the engine apart. As always, nothing is guaranteed. There may be other issues, but I do think it is worth trying. But we do need to do a couple of quick tests to see why the oil is burning. This is a list of the common reasons why you're going to be having oil consumption issues and the valve stem seals are one of those. Fortunately, it's very easy to test because overnight the oil will seep down through the stem seals if they're not working properly. Or you can look for that blue smoke by revving it when the engine is warm. We've all been stuck behind one of those cars in front of us, which is burning off oil and you can smell it and see it very clearly from the exhaust. PCV valve checks, very simple piece of paper or card over the oil filler hole and you should feel some suction on that if it's working correctly. There are three main ways to address this oil consumption problem. And the first of those is the slow and safe method, I call it. We're just going to be adding fuel and doing oil changes. Then we can do an engine flush or piston soak, which I'll talk about a bit later on. Engine oil is known to cause health issues. We've all done it. But do make sure or try to make sure that you use protective gear. Now these are some pistons which I found online in a forum. You can see the state of them. They're absolutely clogged up with gunk and dirt and carbon deposits. And here's another set of pistons with a similar issue. And the oil control ring is fully blocked. Most of the oil goes into the combustion chamber and that causes all sorts of problems. Another easy way to confirm your burning oil in the cylinders is to just take these spark plugs out. All three of these plugs showed obvious signs of oil contamination on the threads. And they also showed a significant buildup of carbon deposits on the piston crowns. If you have a buildup of carbon in the engine, this isn't good. And there are some very obvious symptoms that that shows. We need to address this issue because that causes problems on its own. It tends to contaminate the oil more and it means your rings are going to get dirtier. Many people with the oil consumption issues, all they do is simply top off the oil, leave it on the same service schedule. Concept's pretty simple. We're using a short oil service interval to clean out the rings over time. And we're also going to be using fuel cleaner or premium fuel to get rid of those carbon deposits. You will of course be spending a bit more on oil. However, if you do shop around, you can get oil which meets the requirements for your engine and doesn't actually cost that much. Oil filters are pretty cheap, so do change that at the same time. It's up to you if you want to use add-in fuel additives. They do very much the same thing as the premium fuel. It does make a difference in my experience. It does clean the upper cylinder area also the injectors and the valves. I like to use the premium fuel because I find it easier rather than having to measure out the additive that you're going to put in. It's already pre-mixed with the fuel. When I got this car I took the plugs out and they were completely black with carbon. I took these out after about a month of using the premium fuel and it's been cleaning off the tops of the plugs. I did change the spark plugs just to be on the safe side. When I bought the car, I used a cheap budget oil instead of an engine flush, and I only left that in there for around about 1,200 kilometers. I don't really count one of these oil changes because it was such a short interval, but by the fourth oil change, my consumption had dropped from one liter every 1,000 kilometers to one liter for every 1,500 kilometers. That's a fairly good improvement as far as I'm concerned, but later on I'm hoping to see some more, but only time will tell with this method because it is quite slow. Some oils seem to be better at cleaning. The GTX from Castrol is one of those. Helix Ultra from Shell, I've also found that to be a very good oil. Many of us have seen the videos with the Valvoline Restore and Protect, but unfortunately this oil is not certified for use with European vehicles. I'm sure it's one of the better oils out there for engine cleanliness, but it's not the only oil which does clean an engine. The Peugeot car that I'm running has a wet belt, so I'm not willing to take a chance on that. I just don't know if it's safe to use with a car with that type of belt. The GTX seems to be the one to go for for the cleaning compared to the Magnatec. 
You can use diesel oils in petrol, such as this Helix Ultra, and that's a good option if you want to try and clean the engine. I'd also say it does make a difference in terms of oil consumption with different brands, so make sure you try and stick with one at least for a while to monitor how it's going. No doubt some of these oils clean better than others, but fully synthetic oil should be fairly good at cleaning if it's changed on a regular basis. If you're using Peugeot, you can use the Legacy oils, which I've put on screen for you, but they do have a new oil, which is certified for Stellantis because they are the parent company now. If you're using a diesel engine, I would recommend going over to the new Stellantis oil. I'm not sure if there's any advantages for petrol engine users. I haven't seen most of these brands for sale apart from the Castrol and the Total, so do shop around. It can be quite expensive, the new RCP standard oil. If you're not having any luck or you want to speed things up, you can go with an engine flush. It's worth noting that this isn't entirely risk-free. And some people prefer to do a double oil change to make sure they've fully cleaned it out. There are different types of flush. Some of these are solvent based. They can be quite strong. So don't overdo it with the flush. Some of them are detergent based like the Castrol. These flushes can help to loosen rings if they've got stuck and they can also help to clean out the deposits. If you haven't had any luck with the first two methods and you want to go for a quicker fix, then you can try a piston soak. All you do is take the plugs out and fill up the cylinders with the fuel or system cleaner. Quite a few videos out there on this, but the B12 isn't readily available in Europe. I've used Red X before, that does the job, or the STP fuel cleaner. Other people have reported success with this. It's really down to which method you want to try. I went with the slow and safe one with the oil changes and the premium fuel. It's going to take some time though using that method. So if you're in a hurry, you could try the engine flush, time that with an oil change, or just go straight for the piston soak. It's up to you. Doing a bit of research trying to find out what is normal oil consumption on a modern engine with the low tension rings it is definitely higher than in previous car engine designs. But every engine is different, it does vary, and this is a stepway version 3, and they're quoting that the maximum allowed oil consumption is half a litre per thousand kilometres. This is a vehicle I've been monitoring the oil consumption on. Not an old car, it's only three and a half years old. Using about half a litre per 9,000 kilometres, and that's a pretty thin oil that that is using as well. Older engines unfortunately had many issues with oil consumption. Of course, the engine was easily using a litre per thousand kilometres. The other engine is a 1.4 Ecotec was drinking more than Oliver Reed on a wild night out. Now, there might be cases that this won't work and you may have some obvious or serious engine issues. In that case, you're really going to be looking at a mechanical intervention or fix to sort some of the problems out. High fuel consumption is one of the early indicators of serious problems. Many of the problems can be avoided if the service intervals were more appropriate. This car also has a turbo, so that's another sign that you want to shorten your service intervals. If you don't do a lot of mileage and a six month service seems a bit excessive, the nine month service interval is a good option. I'm quite a big fan of that. That 1.4 engine I showed you earlier, this is just through the oil filler cap, just to show you the varnish and build up on the engine. Varnish isn't a huge problem at the start, but it can lead to additional deposits over time if you don't address the issues. It can end up in extreme cases with severe sludge and build up. Here's a note in the service manual about arduous driving conditions, which mean that you need to go on a shorter service interval. The big one here is the repeat short journeys of 6 miles or 10 kilometers, and the recommended interval is reduced from 15,000 down to 10,000 kilometers. Dropping kids off to school, going to the shop, these are very much in that category. Checking my service schedule book, all of the intervals were 15,000 kilometers. Whilst the previous owner might not have been doing short driving all the time, I think 15,000 is too long myself. And you got your head. The only way to solve a problem is to take remedial action. That means you've actually got to do something about it. B12 
because the oil burning was so bad on this car, the 208, the catalytic converter was replaced. This is the problem with these extended service intervals that you end up costing more money in the long run than it would do to have put this vehicle say on an 8 or 10,000 kilometer service, probably wouldn't have had to replace the catalytic converter and would have had minimal probably oil consumption issues. Hopefully over time we'll see some more improvements with this. Thanks for watching the video, I do appreciate it and hope to see you in future ones.